What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this episode of Coding with the Force, we're gonna figure out what a constructor is and how to actually use one in Apex. All right, everybody, welcome back to this Apex Masterclass tutorial series. Today, we are gonna go over constructors and Apex. We'll figure out what they are, why they're important, and then we'll build an example together. But before we get into that, make sure if you actually enjoy this video to like it, because when you do, it helps this video get out to more people just like yourself who wanna learn this stuff for free. So if you enjoy it, make sure to like it. That way, more people out there just like you will be able to see it too. That's it, let's get back to the video. So first, what is a constructor? If you don't know, a constructor is a way for you to initialize a class or an object with um, essentially some predefined characteristics, right? So say for instance, you are in this computer class and you're you know, actually building a computer, theoretically, right? Um, maybe you want in some situations to start that computer off as a, a server, some type of server, or in other cases when you, you know, call this class and you, you know, start to create it, you want it to be a gaming PC or something along those lines, right? In different situations, you want your class to be constructed in a different way. And the constructors allow you to, um, both construct your classes in, you know, a variety of ways by passing in parameters. And it also allows you to set up things that your class just needs to run. So say for instance, you need a variable set at the time your class was, you know, initialized. Well, your constructor has the capability of doing that. And that might sound really confusing, but when we do the example together here in a second, you'll find that it's really, quite simple. Um, as far as why constructors are useful, they're useful because um, they allow you to change the characteristics of a class, um, you know, at, at what, when you instantiate it. So you've got a class that can be different things based on what you pass into its constructor when you create it or you initialize it. And the... Uh, other thing that constructors are useful for is setting up all the default junk or uh, stuff that your class needs to run in the first place. So maybe your class relies on another class. You can set up that, um, you know, that, that class or initialize that class in your constructor so that you can use it everywhere else in your code. Um, I realize to someone who's never heard of a constructor before, that, you know, what is a constructor and why do you use it might be confusing. So let's do an example together and hopefully it'll start to make a lot more sense while we work through it. So I've got this class in Apex that I've made and it's called Computer Constructor Example. And essentially what we're gonna do is construct, uh, create a constructor for this where we can change the type of computer that we are running, right? So. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna, for simplicity's sake, create a string. Um, we'll make it a private string. Uh, I know we haven't talked about what this private means uh, very much in a video. Pretty soon we're gonna go over access modifiers and we'll talk about what private and public and all that means. So we'll say private string computer type, right? and uh, we'll just set it equal to gaming for now or something, okay? And down here, what we're gonna do is create a constructor. And the constructor is always the exact same name as your class. In my case, it's computer constructor example. And this constructor can either do, you know, Ideally, if your constructor is doing nothing, you don't actually need to make one, just to be super clear. Uh, it's not required you have a constructor unless you actually have a purpose for it. 
But let's say that we wanted to pass in when we constructed this class a computer type, right? And then we could say, um, let me just make this a little easier to understand. We'll call this computer type passed so we don't get into the this keyword, which is, you know, something we'll talk about later down the line. And we'll say computer type equals computer type passed, right? And so what we'll see here in just a second when we call this class is that when we initialize this class, or sorry, instantiate this class uh, in just a second, and we pass it in this computer type, it's going to change it to, you know, this one up here to whatever we've passed in. So we'll take a look at this change just to be super thorough here by saying system.debug. And we are going to output our original computer type and say computer type. And then down here, after we make that, you know, uh, after we set it equal to the computer type we've passed, we'll say new computer type, just so that we can see exactly what's happening when, um, when this runs. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to bring up my Apex Anonymous window. And I'm just going to instantiate this class, right? So I'm going to say computer constructor example, new computer equals new computer constructor. And also, I just want to uh, uh, state, I understand that we have not really gone in super depth about how this class instantiation works and all of this. This is coming up soon too, so don't worry about it. Just let's uh, figure out exactly what constructors do, and um, I'll break this down more in the future. But essentially, you're just creating a new version of this class so that you can use it and run it in your code. Um, OK, so in this Apex Anonymous window, we're going to pass in our computer type. And we'll call it uh, now a server or something, right? And we're just going to run this. And we can see down here in our um, <clears throat> debug log that originally it was gaming as we set it up here. And then after we initialized our class um, and passed over our computer type, it turned into server, which is what we passed into our constructor, right? So. Your constructor is a way to kind of potentially change the defaults or alter the, um, you know, I suppose identity of your class when you create uh, new instances of it. Additionally, it could just be used, like I said before, to set defaults. So maybe um, people could pass in computer types. But if they don't, then we want to make sure that something is set. So maybe this is not set by default. But instead, um, we set it in here, no matter what in the constructor, right? So maybe um, <clears throat> we have another constructor. And this is uh, uh, something that is also important for you to learn as a developer, you can have what are called overloads. Um, this means that it's a method with the same name, but different parameters, right? In our case, this is a constructor with the exact same name, but different parameters. And so maybe it, I want people to be able to call my class or inst instantiate my class without actually passing in a computer type. We just want them to, you know, build a default computer. But we need computer type to be filled out for some reason, because later in our code, we use it. And so in this version where we don't pass in a computer type, we can just say equals gaming or something, right? And now if I called this class 
without something passed into it. Instead, what we'll see is we just get this gaming set up by default. So um, you'll see again, right, this is not assigned a value, but it's going to be because our constructor is going to assign it for us now. So let's check this out. And you'll see it did indeed assign the value computer type of gaming when we initialized our class. So this is really what constructors are used for. And again, I know we just kind of glazed over what method overloading is. This will be covered in a lot more detail later. Okay. But it's not exactly the purpose of this lesson. The purpose of this lesson is just to understand the use case of a constructor. And the use case of a constructor is simply that whenever you initialize a new version of your class in your code, like we're doing here, where we're saying, I want a new uh, version of my computer constructor class, your constructor is going to run, right? And it's going to either set defaults for you that you need to be set for different parts of your code to run appropriately, or it's going to allow the user or the, the developer to pass in parameters to change the way that your code operates based on you know certain situations. Maybe in situation A, it should run a specific way, and in situation B, it should run a different way. Well, the constructor allows you to pass in those parameters to change your code's behavior, potentially. Um, so long story short, constructors are a way to initialize your object and set things up for, uh, or initialize your class and set things up for it, right? So yeah, there you go. Um, all right, uh, that is it for this episode in the series, but um, I hope to see you in the next one and uh, I hope this was helpful. So I'll see you soon. Thank you.